teach you? Get a look at the guy cutting from the right side of the blade, or should I say the wrong side of the blade? Who does that? Greetings fellow woodworkers and makers of great things. Welcome to my shop. If, if you've been watching any of my videos, you've probably noticed that uh, on the table saw, I tend to cross cut from the right side of the blade. Whereas almost every other woodworker I see uh, tends to cut from the left side of the blade. And, you know, I, I think that um, <laughs> brings up an interesting question as to why. Uh, you know, I've been asked about it quite a few times um, in, in the past. So, let's think about it for a minute. Is it, is it better to cut from the right side of the blade or the left side of the blade, and why? Well, I think the number one reason for cutting from the left side of the blade is because we've always done it that way. That's the way I was taught to do it. My shop teacher in sixth grade said, we always cross cut from the left side of the blade and we always rip from the right side of the blade. Uh, so maybe it's just so uh, built into custom and conventional thinking that we just do it and haven't thought about it for the last, I don't know, 30, 40 years. So today I'm gonna to do a relatively short video on my table saw technique get into a little bit as to why I think maybe you should cut from the right side of the blade and why we've always done it that way on the left side of the blade. So let's look at a common uh, situation for a cross cut and, and in this case I want to take one inch off of the end of this board, or approximately an inch, and um, Convention says we cross cut from the left side of the table saw, so I would flip this around. And I, I would make my cut. With all this material unsupported hanging off the end of the table saw. Now, this, this piece is about an inch square, it's not very heavy, I can easily hold it down. But if this is an 8, 10, 12 inch board, um, you know, and if it was much longer, uh, that would be a balancing act to do. So, you know, my preference is to flip this around, get rid of this miter gauge. I'll introduce my regular miter gauge. my fence in this case but it's a long board very easy to do just put it back on my board and now I can cross cut this piece with the work fully supported on the table uh, I don't have to balance it I don't have to do much of anything except uh, make my cross cut uh, pretty straightforward pretty easy right I mean it kind of makes sense if I've got this much area of support to the right side of my blade, okay, to the right side of my blade, I have 56 inches of table support. To the left side of my blade, I have 20 inches of table support. So it just seems to me that I should be cross-cutting to the side where I have the most support for my stock and I'm not doing a balancing act. Again, if this is a large piece of wood, heavy, Right? Uh, you know, it, it really makes sense. I, again, I can easily cut this one inch from the left side of the table as well. But um, having all this extra real estate to the right side makes me wonder why so few people use the right side of the table saw for cross cutting. And, you know, I think I've got an answer to that, or at least I've got a theory, a hypothesis. So here's, here's my theory uh, on the convention of left side uh, cross cutting on the table saw. If we go back in time, uh, to when these conventions were first uh, uh, conceived. Let's look at what table saws look like. Y you can see from this photograph, this is, this is probably a 1950s uh, table saw, uh, a Delta Milwaukee, and we can see that, you know, old table saws had a pretty much fixed fence on the right side of the blade. That fence was uh, I don't know, uh, no further to the right than the edge of the table is on the left. So you had equal working space or equal leverage to uh, support your stock right side or left side. So why not 
cross cut left and leave the fence where it is. Um, fences back then were not easy to take off. If you ever worked on an older table saw, you know that there was a rail on the front and there was a rail on the back. And to some extent, one way or another, the, the fence was affixed to that rail. It wasn't just uh, like we have today with our Beesmeyer and Beesmeyer-like fences where it's a T-square fence and we uh, could just easily pull it off like I did uh, in the beginning of this video, it takes you know, seconds, um, and then put it back on. And then putting it back on in this type of a table saw leads to another question. Is it going to remain aligned in the taking off and putting on process? And the answer is probably not. You're probably going to have to fudge around with your fence again to get it parallel to the blade every time you take it off or put it back onto both rails. All right. So back, back in the day of traditional table saws, taking off the fence was a pain in the butt. You didn't want to do it. You would at every cost. So I get it. Let's, let's cross cut on the left. Let's rip on the right. No sense cross cutting on the right because A, I got to take the fence off most of the time and B, um, I don't have any more tables on that side anyway. But today we do. So, you know, why not get on the right side of that uh, table saw with your extended rip side uh, uh, table extension with your easily slid out of the way or removed uh, T-square fence and cross cut on the right side with all that extra support. If we go back uh, in time a, a, a little further to the 30s, let's take a look at what some table saws looked like back then. And here you can see even a much smaller footprint. Um, you know, things were, were different uh, back then. And, you know, uh, this fence looks like it, 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 it's about the same as the one from the 50s. Um, you know, it's got a front rail, it's got a back rail, it weighs a million pounds. Uh, and if we slide it out or, or move it to the, to, or take it off completely, uh, again, we don't really gain that much advantage. We do not have any uh, table support on the right side of that uh, blade, so we're not going to pick up much uh, in that. Um, I guess the only time that it makes uh, good sense to cut on the left side of the blade is if we are uh, fortunate enough to have a sliding table, because with a sliding table, um, you are going to get that additional support on the left side of the blade. It's going to be much easier to keep your stock square, much easier to support your stock. And, you know, if you're working with panel cutting a lot, um, and, and if you have the space and the budget to extend your table saw that way, uh, I mean, a, a, a sliding table is a, is, is a luxury for sure, right? So, uh, anyway, those are my thoughts. Um, you know, it, it goes back to, to, to custom and tradition, and we've always done it that way. And we used to always do it that way for good reason. There was no more room on the right than there was on the left. I didn't want to take off the fence, so it makes sense. I'll just keep my miter gauge on the left, my rip fence on the right. But it's, uh, it's 21st century, folks, so why don't you join this knucklehead uh, and consider cutting on the right side uh, of the blade. So I went and dug out a, a piece of uh, a more substantial stock. This is by no means ready to be cross-cut, it's still in the rough, but, but for illustrative purposes, right? Uh, you know, to, 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 to further make the point. If I start getting to the left side of my blade here, it's not long before this becomes a balancing act and even a pivot point, you know, uh, for this board uh, and, and for me to support it. And in my shop, I can't go any further. Now I'm hitting, well, I'm hitting a clamp near the wall there. I'm not quite hitting the wall yet. On the other hand, why don't I use this real estate over here? The board supports itself. The board supports itself, and all I have to do is get it through the blade. I don't have to worry about balancing it or lifting it. So that's my... Um, that's my cutting side of choice, uh, to the right side of the blade. Okay, so while I'm at it, raging in the face of convention and breaking all these traditions and myths and customs, uh, let me talk about uh, cross-cut sleds, all right? And I see a lot of folks with big old cross-cut sleds, sometimes two, three, and four cross-cut sleds, each of which weigh 30, 40 pounds and take up a ton of space. Here's my solution for a crosscut sled. It tucks right under my table saw here. It's 
It's got one rail. And that's it. Whenever I need a cross cut sled, this does the trick. Let's see if I got some stock over here, just give me an idea. But uh, you know, you register your you register your stock, you make your cut. Uh, it is not difficult to make a perfectly square cut using uh, a single rail. You just make sure that you're always riding the left side of that rail. There's very little play in a sled, but what you want to do is favor one side. I favor the left side. I'm going to ride that perfectly straight as I go through the cut. Uh, and the cut will come out to 90 degrees. Occasionally, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll need to make an angle cut or something like that. Not a big deal. Um, I've got a couple of screw holes in here once where I set up something or the other. I can't remember what. Because uh, I have probably had a lot of repeated ones to do. Um, but simple solution for uh, a cross-cut table that's not going to take up all your real estate and be a real uh, hassle to, to move around the shop when you're done. Goes right there. Doesn't bother me, doesn't get in the way. Couldn't be simpler to... Uh, uh, to work with. So, you know, folks, I'm not trying to say that there's a right way or a wrong way to do anything. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, think, be creative, you know, um, don't accept convention. Uh, you know, convention is, 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 is wonderful and amazing. A lot of people over a lot of years, you know, figured out a lot of great ways to do things and many, many of them are still valid in not just woodworking, but in life in general. But sometimes times change. Table saws don't look like what they used to look like. Um, we have more things, more resources at our disposal. Um, if you ever saw my uh, shellac video, right? Shellac's been around for, you know, I don't know, thousands of years. Um, but they didn't have electronics, right? They didn't have a, a dental vibrator uh, to help you uh, mix your shellac. So, so go with it, you know? Think of different ways to get, get things done and don't be afraid to break convention. Have fun out there with your woodworking guys and thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, please like, subscribe, and, and feel free to comment. If you think I'm full of crap, please feel free to comment. I don't mind negative criticism, believe me, it's okay. Um, so uh, hope to see you soon on the next video. Thanks.